In this video, I'll be sharing with you three scientifically proven exercises to prevent dementia. And you can start applying these exercises straight away because they're not only neuroprotective, but they will also improve your brain performance. Stick around to the end of the video and I will share with you a bonus exercise which will show you how all of these exercises actually integrate. When dementia affects the brain, it can result in rapid cognitive decline. And this may look like mental fatigue, memory loss, and even confusion. For example, you may get into the car and forget to bring your keys or may forget where you're going altogether. What many people might not realize is that the onset of dementia can happen as early as 30 years of age. And the symptoms itself might not present itself until many decades later. So it's really important to start taking care of your brain as early as possible so that you can enjoy a lifetime of benefits. The most common form of dementia is known as Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's disease itself is fairly well understood. What causes Alzheimer's disease is the buildup of a protein known as beta amyloids. And over decades, these proteins form clusters which can turn into plaque. When the brain is unable to remove plaque, it causes inflammation in the brain and can even result in neuronal cell death. This is actually the beginning of mild cognitive impairment. So why does the brain produce these chemicals in the first place and how can we prevent the buildup of these chemicals? The brain, much like any other organ, produces chemical waste and when we rest or when we go to sleep, the brain gets the opportunity to remove these chemicals through the bloodstream. When we are stressed or when the brain is running on overdrive, we are actually robbing the brain of the opportunity to remove these toxic chemicals. And over time, these chemicals can continue to build up without showing any clinical symptoms. Stressing less, however, is not the answer. For example, someone could simply be sitting in front of a TV and avoiding stress altogether. But this does not build a healthy, resilient and adaptive nervous system. So let's have a look at ways that are scientifically proven to work. The first way we can prevent dementia is by improving your heart rate variability. And the heart rate variability is a very sensitive measure. It's the moment to moment fluctuation in your heart rate. And this also affects the blood flow to the brain. In neuroscience, we actually use these changes in blood flow to create functional MRI images. Your HRV is affected by the amount of sleep you had, your daily activity, your coffee intake and alcohol consumption. So as a primary indicator, it cannot be tricked. And as such, it is a true measure of the health of your nervous system. And if you'd like to learn more about HIV training, you can click the link in this video and it'll take you to a video that is specific to HIV biofeedback training. The second way that you can prevent dementia is by improving the quality of your sleep. And this can simply be done by exposing yourself to sunlight, especially in the morning, because sunlight calibrates what we call the circadian rhythm. This determines your 24 hour sleep wake cycle and it actually determines the time during the day when you're most active or when you're ready to go to bed. The brain is protected in the cranial cavity by a thin layer of fluid called the cerebrospinal fluid or CSF for short. And what is not widely understood is that when you go to sleep, the CSF is actually flushed out of the brain and replaced. So this removes any dead nerve cells, uh, toxins and even plaque from the brain. So when you go to sleep, your brain is actually washed clean. There are various different ways to improve your sleep, but one that I highly recommend is setting up a sleep alarm. And yes, that's right, it's not a wake up alarm, but a sleep alarm which notifies you an hour before you go to bed so that you can start engaging in nurturing activities, maybe dim the lights, uh, listen to calming music, or even read a book. So these nurturing activities help you wind down before you go to bed, and that improves the quality of your sleep. You may even have a wearable device that already has this sleep notification feature. For example, I have this Aura Ring which measures my heart rate variability, activity levels and recovery rate during the day and it notifies me the best time for me to go to bed. The third way to prevent dementia is through daily physical activity and what is often recommended is cardio. And cardio is really good when your heart rate variability is high because you're getting 
enough daily activity you're burning through calories and you also get enough rest which means that you're able to sustain that level of cardio over a long period of time but what happens when your heart rate variability is low and you're not able to rest and recover and in these cases you often find the person is quite stressed quite worked up anxious and agitated so in these cases what i would recommend is more restorative movement to bring your heart rate down which then increases your heart rate variability these restorative movements are incredibly therapeutic on the nervous system because as we get older our muscle fibers tend to become shorter and there's more chronic tension held in the nervous system and we call this tension hypertonicity, which increases the risk of injury. What we want in a movement practice is the ability to soften the body and move more fluidly. And this is often what is lacking in most movement training programs. And in my Train Your Nervous System online course, I teach you how to move more fluidly without any skill, strength, momentum or force. And this is greatly beneficial, especially when you're experiencing mobility loss or joint pain. In fact, this simple exercise is actually designed to improve your cognitive performance, such as spatial awareness, navigation, and proprioceptive memory. And these things are often lost as we get older because we do not participate in discovery-based movements anymore. The very nature of these exercises stimulates the production of a neuroprotective protein known as the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF for short and the BDNF is a natural antidepressant and is essential for the survival and growth of new neurons and its uh, involvement is very well understood in learning memory and neuroplasticity. If you enjoyed this video hit like and subscribe and since you've stuck out to the end of the video I'll share with you a bonus exercise which is perhaps the best way to enrich your brain activity and that is to learn new skills. There are various different ways of learning and in the link above this video I'll share with you five different ways that you can learn to improve your brain function and performance and check out my channel for more information on the brain body and behavior topic.